Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, Dylan here. We have a massive new update from Melania Trump, the former first lady and potential future first lady, God willing, that Trump ends up winning the election come this November, and an update from former President Donald J. Trump and God willing, the future President Donald John Trump come let's see what happens this upcoming november so we have some beautiful updates today actually some really really good updates especially with donald trump and everything happening with the civil fraud trial with uh leticia james and judge engeron and they could actually be now facing sanctions because a appeals court basically stepped in and said look this is absolutely ridiculous there's no way that Trump should have to put up a $454 million bond and Letitia James could start seizing his properties. They're like, this is America and we need to protect Donald Trump. So an appeals court actually came in and if you said a prayer for Trump, I think your prayers were answered because Donald Trump basically got saved and now he has more time to appeal this. You know, people are now seeing it, it totally backfired against Letitia James and Judge Engeron because people are now like, oh, well, even an appeals court said that was ridiculous. And now they're like, people are understanding that the Judge Engeron and Letitia James court, that's a very low level court. Then it, it can go to an appeals court, a higher court, and then the Supreme Court. So this is just stage one. And people are like, oh, that's actually a joke. Letitia James is not going to start seizing Trump's Trump Tower, Trump planes, Trump golf courses start getting access to his bank accounts like and they were actually going to start garnishing his wages, taking his money, his income from his properties. No, no, no. Now we have a beautiful update from Melania too. Before we jump in, we're going to um, read the Bible because God comes first. Amen. Comment amen down below if you believe that God comes first, right? And let's keep praying. Remember that. Remember, let's keep praying up until November and after that as well, because Trump's going to need help if he does end up winning. Okay, this is Psalm 100. So we're going to read this and then get started with the video, with the news, with Trump and Melania. This is a psalm for giving grateful praise. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. And give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Amen. Wow, how beautiful is that? Let's remember to shout for joy to the Lord and worship the Lord with gladness. Let's not be sad all the time. I mean, hey, we do have emotion for a reason. It's okay to feel angry and sad and sometimes you might feel depressed. But hey, it says in scripture, worship the Lord with gladness. Put a smile on your face. Say hi to your neighbor, right? Okay. <laughs> And hey, we are worshiping the Lord of gladness today because, whoa, we got some incredible updates and things are looking really good for Trump and Melania. Let's tune in. All right, so firstly, Donald Trump just gave a speech this morning and he said religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. So I love how Donald Trump, actually my friends, you know, he has the support not only of God, but he also has the support of Christians around the world. And that there's a lot of Christians and a lot of new, you know, younger Christians waking up too, which is why I think a lot of young people are starting to, to support Trump. That's just my kind of theory is that a lot of people, you know, they don't support this whole reproductive rights movement, abortion movement that Joe Biden and the liberals are pushing. They want, you know, classic, um, conservatism in our nation. So anyways, here's Trump talking about religion and Christianity missing from this country. Let's watch. I'm proud to be partnering with my very good friend, Lee Greenwood. Who doesn't love his song, God Bless the USA, in connection with promoting the God Bless 
the USA Bible. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our founding father documents. Yes, the Constitution, which I'm fighting for every single day, very hard to keep Americans protected. Also, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence and the Pledge of Allegiance are all part of this. God bless the USA Bible. And there's a lot of liberals who are even trying to get rid of the, the USA flag and try to take the God's name out of all of these, you know, um, all of our these practices that we have in traditions. It's just very important and very important to me. I want to have a lot of people have it. You have to have it for your heart, for your soul. Many of you have never read them and don't know the liberties and rights you have as Americans and how you are being threatened to lose those rights. It's happening all the time. It's a very sad thing that's going on in our country, but we're going to get it turned around. Religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. And I truly believe that we need to bring them back and we have to bring them back fast. I think it's one of the biggest problems we have. That's why our country is going haywire. We've lost religion in our country. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. It's a lot of people's favorite book. This Bible is a reminder that the biggest thing we have to bring back America and to make America great again is our religion. Religion is so important. It's we need to keep God in the center of our nation, my friends. That's the only way we're going to get through this together. So missing, but it's going to come back and it's going to come back strong, just like our country is going to come back strong. In the end, we do not answer to bureaucrats in Washington. We answer to God in heaven. Amen. Nations are under siege. We must protect content that is pro-God. We love God, and we have to protect anything that is pro-God. Hey, we're pro-God, Trump. we got to protect this show. We must defend God in the public square and not allow the media or the left-wing groups to silence, censor, or discriminate against us. We have to bring Christianity back into our lives and back into what will be again a great nation. Our founding fathers did a tremendous thing when they built America on Judeo-Christian values. Now that foundation is under attack, perhaps as never before. What can we do? Stand up, speak out, and pray that God will bless America again. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible we must make America pray again. Amen! Make America pray again. I love that. Woo! We should get that on t-shirts. Pray, get educated, get motivated, and stand with me and the legions of Americans asking God to bless our great nation, to bring our great nation back, and to make America great again. I'm proud to partner with Lee in this offering. He's a very special man both as a talent, but maybe even more so as a human being. He's yes. very, very special. And I think you all should get a copy of God Bless the USA Bible now and help. What an awesome Bible. That's awesome. Spread our Christian values with others. There you have it. Let's make America pray again. God bless you and God bless the USA. God bless America. Land that I love. Okay, I want to uh, play this new interview that we have with Melania Trump's possible return to the White House. She says, never say never. Let's tune in. I love Melania. And I have faith. I have faith, my friends. Do you? The former First Lady Melania Trump granting us her first sit-down interview since leaving the White House. We met at her new home in Mar-a-Lago. Whoa! I actually went to Mar-a-Lago, pretty cool. Being your first lady was my greatest honor. Thank you for your love and your support. Melania Trump, thank you so much for joining us on Fox & Friends. Thank you for having me. Well, I think this is your first sit-down interview since being in the White House, is that right? It is, it is my first sit-down, yes. Wow. Life, uh, She's a very private woman, so this is really cool that we get to watch this. You know, since leaving the White House. Life is great and um, <laughs> keeping it busy. And she just proved all the media wrong. You know, all the media goes, oh, Melania is in shambles. You know, her life sucks. She's not, she doesn't want to be with Trump. She goes, life's been great. I got a smile on my face. Um, you know, time flies fast and uh, we are just, everybody's doing very well. We're here in beautiful Florida. 
what are your real thoughts on Washington, D.C.? I mean, your husband called it a swamp. It is time to drain the swamp. What do you think of it? I like Washington, (laughs) D.C. I know it operates completely different than any other city, but uh, I really like it there, and uh, I enjoyed living in the White House. To be First Lady of the United States was my greatest honor. I think we achieved a lot in the four years of uh, Trump administration. Uh, wow, look at that. That's a beautiful photo right here. That's a beautiful, a lot in- beautiful photo. I mean, Melania Trump, so classy. This is not what you see I, uh, enjoy- right with Jill Biden. I taking care of the White House. It was uh, my home for a while. I understood it, uh, it is a people's house. It was, uh, it was a privilege to live there. And maybe it'll be your home again? Uh, never say never. <laughs> never say never. Wow, never thought I would be singing out Justin Bieber. But yeah, never say never. <laughs> never say never. Being out of DC and having that time, what do you make of the state of the country right now? I think it's sad to see what's going on if you really look deeply into it. I think a lot of people are struggling and suffering Mm -hmm. and what is going on around the world as well. So it's very sad to see and I hope it changes fast. It's been in the news. As, As someone who loves children and is dedicated so much to their betterment, how do you feel when you see shortage baby formula and families just struggling to get basic items like that? It's heartbreaking to see that they are struggling and the food is not available for children in 21st century in United States of America. Oh, this was when there was a baby shortage. This was a little bit of an older interview. What's it happening? Leadership. Leadership, or lack thereof. Yeah. I know opioids was part of your Be Best initiative. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was watching the news recently, record amounts of drugs. Yes. In fact, we did a little research. You were the only first lady to go to the border. You did it twice. Yes. Whoa, I didn't know that. She was the first, uh, the first first lady to go down to the border and she went twice? Wow, that just gained more respect for me, uh, for Melania. Did you guys even know that? What's it like to see the things you worked on so hard change so drastically? It's very sad to see that it changed so drastically. I know that uh, COVID uh, brought uh, another um, struggles to the people who were having problems before, but uh, what's going on, it's um, unthinkable. A lot of people are dying from drugs and it's, um, it's very sad to see. How did you put up with the constant criticism? Fashion statement. This is Trump uh, flew to and from the nation's capital wearing a jacket with a stunning phrase on the back declaring, quote, I really don't care. Do you? What? Do the media take um, Vogue, for example, five months into Joe Biden's president, Joe Biden's on the cover. What? Are you, that you put Kamala Harris on the cover of Vogue? That's, okay, Uh, Vogue just lost all my respect. And Hillary Clinton was on there too, what a joke. Jill Biden, I'm sorry, but she does not compare in comparison to, to Melania Trump. I mean, Melania Trump is a 10 out of 10. Kamala Harris is a 0.0 out of 10. Kamala Harris is on the cover before she's even sworn in. Hillary Clinton was on the cover when she was first lady. Michelle was on the cover three times. Oh my gosh. Okay, that's even worse. (laughs) I'm sorry, but Michelle Obama as the cover of Vogue three times? She is a negative zero, 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 zero out of 10. Negative 10,000 infinity out of 10. That's the worst thing that ever happened to Vogue. What a disgrace to fashion. Yet, with your business background and your fashion background and your beauty, never on the cover of Vogue. Why the double standard? They're biased and um, they have likes and dislikes. And it's so obvious. And I think Americans. So obvious. And uh, everyone see it. It was their decision. And I have much more important things to do. 
and I did in the White House than being on the cover of Vogue. Seems like anything you do, no matter how well intentioned it is, the criticism. Wait, was she never? Was Melania never on the cover of Vogue? But yet all these hideous women were. The is constant. Melania Trump has an initiative called Be Best. Um, forget the grammatical challenges there. We don't know if Melania is moving murder for us down to the Winter White House. The only thing she murder. Okay, that's sick. We've been working on is an escape tunnel. Well, people. I hate the media. Well, I see always criticize me whatever I do, and I'm used to that. I move forward, and I'm here to helping people, and that is the mission. And those people who criticize me. I would encourage them to help in their own community or maybe join my Foster the Future initiative. Yeah, Melania Trump literally is helping save foster children and yet people are criticizing what her. What is Fostering the Future? I know that's an initiative of, of Be Best. Why is uh, working with foster kids such a passion of yours? I started to work and uh, visiting the f foster care facilities uh, when I was in the White House. And uh, just last week, how cool is this place of hope as well and met with the leaders of the foster care community and some parents and children. And I met also with the adults uh, who aged out of the foster care system. Just know my limits are to still need help. They need our support, resources, empowerment to, to achieve their American dream. So you're using a new technology to help. Uh, raise the profile and fund these initiatives. I have been working on my NFT projects uh, since I left the White House. My NFTs, they are available on melaniatrump.com and usmemorabilia.com. And now we have a few of the NFTs that they are minting on it. It's a national park. She actually understands technology. Like Melania Trump is, is a genius. She's brilliant. Melania Trump's doing some incredible things. So the NFTs will go towards uh, education, providing education. Awesome. Opportunities for foster care children who are aging out of foster system. She wants to help set up foster care children for the future because I believe it's like 3% or less than 3% of those who leave the foster care system don't graduate college ever. She wants to close that gap. She really is helping, you know, people and people don't give her the, the credit for that. Yearly 20,000 children are aging out of foster care. A year. A year. Yes, and now we have 407,000 children in foster care in system America today. in America yes. today. So I will be uh, proudly grant um, scholarships to the children, uh, to students who deserve it. Your first scholarship recipient, uh, his name is Michael Weitzman. How about we surprise him together? Are you okay with that? Yes, fantastic. If I give him a call yes. and he doesn't know you're here. Michael. Yes, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm um, good. It's Pete Hegseth with Fox and Friends. If you would, share your story. And Look how cool this is. They literally giving out scholarships to foster children. I love it. In the, in the foster system. Yeah, you know, I was born to a single mom who was 18 years old. I became a foster child. I lived in different homes until I was 17. I know you're, you're aware of the scholarship you're receiving because of Melania Trump uh, and, and the Fostering yeah. the Future initiative. What does that mean to you? What does it mean to get that kind of scholarship? It's literally a dream come true. Well, you know what's, what's neat is that, uh, well, let me just do it. She's hearing what you're saying right now. Uh, if I may, Michael, First Lady of the United States. <laughs> Hello, Michael. I just got chills. I just got chills all over. I literally have goose, goosebumps all over my arms. This is so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Melania Trump is really helping people. Oh, yeah, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. So good to meet you. Thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, you're very welcome. And um, I just wish you a great success. And I know you're starting the classes in the fall. And yeah, uh, just make your dreams come true. Study hard and send me your grades, okay? <laughs> I will. I got you. Straight A's. Here we come. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing. And wow. With our viewers who are excited to hear from you and all the efforts you're, you're doing here on National Foster Care Month as well. Thank you so much. I absolutely love that. Melania Trump, such a beautiful woman. And hey, we could, we could use her back in 
the White House because look at this. This is a comparison of Melania Trump's Christmas decorations and Jill Biden's Christmas decorations on the right. It's a tradition that the first ladies uh, coordinate the uh, Christmas decorations in the White House. Look how beautiful they are on the left and look how disgusting they are on the right. I mean, that's such a mockery of Christmas. Christmas is about Jesus. Christmas is about God and they have people dressed up in wild outfits. I mean, this looks like Willy Wonka chocolate factory. Look on the left, how beautiful and classy Melania Trump is. And this is Jill Biden's Christmas on the right. I mean, this is, this is really, really sick, really weird. I mean, this is, this is a disgrace. God, I would have to say that God would not approve of, you know, this is a Christmas. This is about the birth of Jesus. I mean, what the heck is this? Tap dancing in the White House with makeup on and short dresses and weird masks on. I mean, somebody was wearing like a, like, look at that guy in the back. Like, that's so weird. What the heck is he even wearing? This dude right here, this dude. What the heck is this? This is Christmas under Jill Biden? It's so super weird, guys. If you guys are not woken up yet, if you're not hashtag woke, I know, I feel like woke, woke is a, a term that the Democrats stole, but like literally Democrats should wake up and become woke and realize that this is a disgrace to Jesus, disgrace to Christmas. I mean, Melania Trump, she is super into God. She's super into the Lord. Look at this. This was her on the National Day of Prayer, recognizing the power of prayer. And let's all say a prayer for, for Trump and for Melania right now. Let's watch this. On this year's National Day of Prayer, we are confronted with the challenges of an invisible enemy. One that can only be defeated through unity and our nation's strength, love, and devotion to each other. Did you hear that? Did, she just talked about defeating the devil. She didn't say it out loud, but she said de defeating the invisible enemy. She's talking about the devil. And she said we need to do that through God. I mean, Melania Trump really knows, really knows what's going on, my friends. This is why we need people like her back in the White House. I mean, she is a powerful, powerful woman. She knows, she's because she's in tune with the Holy Spirit. All through history, Americans have unified in challenging moments and during our greatest times of need, we always turn to prayer. Amen. Today, I want to ask all of you to unite and pray to protect and give strength to those. Let's pray and protect our nation. And pray for the courage and knowledge that better days are ahead of us. I hope better days are ahead of us. And hopefully that involves you, Melania, being back in the White House. We will soon return to work and to our places of worship, reunite with loved ones, attend sporting events, and gather with friends. This was during the, you know, whole illness that took place. Share some laughter. Our dear citizens, through prayer and faith, we will get through this together. I'm so proud of the way all of you have responded to this crisis. When we reach out to our Lord, let us remember, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Amen. Melania Trump quoting scripture, I believe, what is that, Proverbs 4.13? I think I have a mug that says that. Prayer and faith, we will get through this together. I'm so proud of the way all of you have responded to this crisis. When we reach out to our Lord, let us remember, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. I actually have this mug for sale on my website. I never shout out my, my website I have, but I have this quote, this scripture on a mug on my site. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And on the other side it says, amen, amen, amen but this is a travel mug that we have on my site. I, lo I love taking this one, one around. But it's linked below, it's called godcomesfirst.com. God bless you all, and God bless the United States of America. How classy is this woman? She is extremely classy. 
I love that. Look at this. Trump and Melania attend White House National Day of Prayer Service. You, can, you just can see that they love the Lord and they love, you know, putting forth this. Have you, have, has Joe Biden and Jill Biden done National Day of Prayer? I haven't seen that. Have you? Have you seen them do this? Look how beautiful this is. Gosh, do I miss the days when Melania Trump... And Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Trump. I miss this, guys, a lot. I really, really do, I have to say. Selfishly and selflessly, because I know it's for the good of, of our world and our nation, I miss this couple in the White House. And I'm embarrassed that we have Joe and Jill right now. On this National Day of Prayer, let's take a moment to extend our deepest sympathy to the families of those who have lost their loved ones to COVID-19. Oh, this was during the, you know, the time. Let us pray for the ill, the ones who are suffering, and those serving on the front lines. When evil darkens our world, give us light. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubts assail us, give us faith. This is the, the, the videos and the photos that you will not see the mainstream media pushing. Look how, you know, respectful they are to God. This is them praying together. They have God in the center of their relationship. And you cannot say the same thing about Joe Biden and Jill Biden. I mean, this is what separates them from others. Now let's keep watching. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us vision. When we lose our way, be our guide. That we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. Amen. Amen. Look out, look at that. That's so beautiful. I love that. Thank you very much, please. Thank you. Be seated, please. And Melania, thank you very much on the second anniversary of the Be Best initiative. You've done a fantastic job and everybody appreciates it. But I, I love that. Be best. Be best. Honor. Thank you. And I want to thank you on behalf of the entire nation for all that you do for America's children and on fighting the drug addiction problem that we have in this country. It's all over the world. But you know, I want to help support Melania Trump's Fostering the Future initiative. And I, my goal this year um, hopefully, you know, if I get some extra money, I want to help donate to that that initiative, Fostering the Future, Melania Trump. I think she's doing a great job. But I want to thank you very much. Great job. You do. You work so hard. On this national... Love how supportive he is of his wife as well. ...day of prayer, America is engaged in a fierce battle against a very terrible disease. Throughout our history, in times of challenge, our people have always called upon the gift of faith, the blessing of belief the power of prayer, and the eternal glory of God. I ask all Americans to join their voices and their hearts in spiritual union as we ask our Lord in heaven for strength and solace, for courage and comfort, for hope and healing, for recovery, and for renewal. Wow. Trump's calling for a renewal, my friends. How beautiful is this? This is a 40-minute video, so I'm not going to play this the whole thing because we have other news to cover. Um... But look at this. I wanted to play this video too. Trump was asked, who do you want to be the Speaker of the House? He said, Jesus Christ. Your voters very well, and they are concerned when they look at what they see on the, in, on, in the House, in the Hill, in the chaos. Yeah. What is your message to Well, I think it's going to get solved, and when it does, it'll be a beautiful thing, and uh, it'll teach a lot of people about democracy. You know, that happened once before. It's very tough with the four votes, you know, with the four vote spread, but uh, something's going to happen. It'll be positive. It'll end up working well. Uh, I'm staying above it. I have to right now, but I've uh, spoken to just about all the candidates. There are quite a few of them, and they're terrific people. 
you know, that fourth threshold is very tough. It's a very tough thing, no matter who it is. Uh, I said there's only one person that can do it all the way. You know who that is? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus came down and said, I want to be speaker. He would do it. <laughs> I love Trump. I love him. That's so awesome. And look at this. This is Trump talking about the importance again of having the Bible. Most importantly, I brought my Bible. Okay. It's the word of God. It's the truth. And, you know, it's First Presbyterian Church, Jamaica. And this was written by my mother with my name, with my, it's a long time ago, with my name, with my address, with everything. In case I lost it, somebody would return it. You know, in the old days, if you lost something, they returned it. Today, a little bit less so. This is why people, I mean, look at the crowd. There's so many people come to listen to Trump speak, especially about God. People like Trump because he talks about God a lot. But I, I saw this and I said, I have to bring it and just show it because it brings back so many memories. We're going to have a very interesting period of time. And we are. We are going through an extremely, extremely interesting period of time. But Trump knows that here in America, we don't worship the government. We worship God. Let's watch this. And we know that families and churches, not government officials, know best how to create a strong and loving community. Amen to that. Trump knows that we need to focus on families and communities. And above all else, we know this. In America, we don't worship government, we worship God. Amen. Amen to that. Amen to that. Trump says prayer changes hearts. Let's watch this. Trump says that Trump says that Jesus Christ is more famous than him. You still need help from the boss. We need help from the boss. That's what happened. We need help. Amen. Yeah, we need help. It's all right to say. Now they'll criticize me for that. How dare he say that? How dare he say You know, when you invoke God's name like this and you, you praise God, this is a form of worship, my friends. We need to remember that, that Trump is worshiping God in this moment. He's actually giving praise to God. When you praise God this much, you will be rewarded for that. And now I'll say it. I'll say it. I'll say it. Somebody said to me the other day, you're the most famous person in the world by far. I said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. They said, yes, you are. I said, no. He said, who's more famous? I said, Jesus Christ. Look at that smile. <laughs> Look at that smile. Look at those flags waving in the wind for Jesus. Even I'm not the... taking any chances. I'm not going to have an argument. Hey, I'm not having any arguments. Jesus Christ. I mean, when you use, my friends, this is, this is the exact, you know, reason that I love people who have fame, I guess you can call Trump the most famous person in the world under Jesus. And when you're using your platform, you know, to talk about God so much, I mean, this is literally happening right now. This just came out, my friends, today, March 26, 2024. You have Donald Trump showing the Bible. I mean, you cannot make this up. This is what the potential future president of our nation is doing. And this is not to be underestimated, the power of the Lord, the power of God, putting the Bible out in front of the world. So share this video so more people can see this because this is what could be, be potentially back in our nation. I will give you guys more updates on all of this. We have a lot of good news coming out day in and day out. So make sure you're subscribed to my show. Thanks for watching my friends, God bless. And if you do wanna pick up yourself a coffee mug or a t-shirt, or a hat or a hoodie with Christian and patriotic Bible verses on them. This one says, God bless America. They are all about God. You can go to my website, godcomesfirst.com, link below. These are the coffee mugs that we have. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Again, I barely ever promote this, but if you wanna go check it out, you know, we have youth clothing as well. Water bottles to go, journals. These are really cool journals. Uh, candles too. Basically anything you might want, even coffee coasters. Thank you so much for supporting my show. 
If you just subscribe, that's the best thing you can do. You guys are the best. We'll talk soon.